What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. We got Justin Lee and a couple of his friends here, Sean and Zach from Kuyu. I brought the bow, I brought the spear guns. Just looking to harvest some of Hawaii's wild food. I'm looking for that knife jaw. I haven't had one in a while and they're kind of like one of my favorite fish to eat. We're gonna get some coles too. I brought a bunch of Axis deer. I wanna grind that up. It's gonna be a full. I'm gonna change the brakes on my truck. I'm doing what? You trick them into coming for spear fishing. <laughs> By, come over, come take over, I'll take you hunting. hunting. And then give them some work to do. We will see you guys in the water. I remember feeling completely exhausted this day. And guys, you'll hear right away here this awful squeak. And what that is, is that's actually my sinuses equalizing as I'm going down and everything is compressing. And it's really important to kind of get to know your own body and get to understand, you know, your sinuses and your ears, your station tubes, because they really do play a massive role in so much of your spearfishing out here. And as you get to know your own body, you get to know like kind of what you can push through and what you can like press on with, or what is like going back to shore and you're done for the day. And for me, I've got these sinus problems where like there's one little lobe in like my, you know, upper frontal sinus cavity area that just sometimes doesn't equalize and causes these squeaks all day long, but I know that I can kind of push through if I need to get a couple dives done. So right when I get down to the bottom here, you'll see something really cool, but two kumus pop up out of nowhere. Now this was one of my first few dives, so I was freaking pumped to see those things. But if you look, you can kind of see that they're so comfortable right now. They're right there below that moo, and they're not gonna go anywhere until I scare them away. So on the way down, I actually spotted an uku, and that's that head swivel, the action that's going on right now. I'm looking to see if that uku is gonna come in, is gonna make an appearance, because there's a great chance that I can shoot that uku, and then Justin could come down here, and those kumus are still gonna be sitting right there. Eventually, a couple of these head turns go back and forth, and I decide, you know what, it's time to take one of these things, line up here with that little pathos laser, and a perfect stone shot there. Now, I'm really starting to fall in love with these Pathos guns, and as I've said before, anything that you guys see me or Justin use, you guys can get over at AmericanDiveCo.com, but what I just found out is they do free shipping on anything over 100 bucks, including to Hawaii. And if you live out here, you know how big a deal that is because it's so hard to get stuff sent out here. As always, I'll put the links to all that stuff that I'm using down below, as well as a 10% discount code. So we switch over to the Justin cam now, and what's really cool about this dive here is that you'll kind of see him do the very similar thing that I just did with that Kumu, where a lot of times like there's one fish in your face that you're like, yeah, I'll take that at the end of my dive, but you're still actively looking for something better. You know, you're looking for that upgrade. You know, you're looking for that big move that comes in or, or maybe it's a Kumu or maybe that Uku. But when he gets to the bottom here, there was, there was a Joe, like Joe's around. A lot of times they're down there, they're in your face. He wants to take that fish home with him, but he's gonna do those head spins. He's gonna look around, see if anything else presents himself. And as long as he does it calm enough, he's not gonna spook away that fish that was there straight from the beginning. And that's exactly what happens, that Joe's cruising back and forth, manages to get that gun out and just stick it right before he has to go up to the surface anyways. So part of the deal when we get over here and we get access to these zones is usually we owe somebody some fish. And most of the time, they're looking for cole. And if you guys have seen our channel at all, or if you live in Hawaii, you understand that this has gotta be the best fish that comes out of this island. I, I, without a doubt, my favorite one to eat, and there's just nothing like sitting around with a beer on the beach, eating these things fried up crispy. So that was the mission for me today, was once I got my kumu, I kind of moved in a little bit shallower. Justin was off helping the guys, you know, teaching them a little bit about spearfishing, showing them some stuff. And I was like, well, let me smash some of these fish. Now my three pronging skills are still pretty bad. You know, I'm definitely losing some fish. I'm definitely not picking up those two, three on a dive that I see Justin do. And I'm definitely not efficient with that stringer on my belt the way that he kind of has. And if you looked at one of those old videos, I'll put a link right here, but that dude, three prongs, it's like art. One of the things that I see a lot of people, including myself, kind of get caught up in when you get that three prong is that they're so easy and so quick to reload and there's a lot of times so many of these little fish around that you just kind of fire and all willy-nilly like you know you don't quite treat each one of those fish like it is you know like the biggest uku you've ever seen instead it's kind of like oh i'll try and get that one i'll try and get this one and that's one of the things that i've been personally trying to really focus on as i get better at three-pronging myself is i want to make sure that i land 
as many of, of these as possible per shots taken. You know, I do not want to just be taking shots. And I think that's something that we all kind of can work on, whether, you know, you're a beginner or an expert is, is one of those things that as I've grown in my career, I come back and I'm like, I missed two fish, or you know, I missed three fish, or I missed no fish, or I tore one fish off. It doesn't really matter to me how many fish I landed, because you know, a lot of times I could kind of take as much as we want or as much as we need. What really matters to me is the percentage of failure. You know, as I as I continue to grow, it's it's more that's really what I'm focused on. And you can really take that down all the way to your three pronging. And think about it the same kind of way. Like, you know, you don't want to injure these fish. You don't want them to get away. You want to treat each and every one like it's the biggest uku you've ever seen. And that efficiency is something that you can really see in Justin spearfishing. You know, we've swapped over to his cam now. This is him three pronging. And you'll see that over and over and over, it's just consistently hits them, lands them, brings them on the stringer, goes back for another one. See that here with his double cole, and then again here with these menpachi. Gets down here, reloads, gets down up under the cave, and one of the cool things about the menpachis is you, you, a lot of times you gotta get close enough that you can see into the dark, that like you get the night vision, but you don't wanna be too close that you spook them. And then when you're down there, you've really gotta move slow to make sure that they don't all freak out and bounce all over the place so that you can get one, you know, and you're shooting at a stable target, and he's able to do that again right here, lines up, and he gets another one of these beautiful menpachis. Another thing Justin does really well with those three prongs is shot placement. You know, you really cannot take a shot on one of these larger fish until you have the shot that you need. You need to stone this thing or you need to hit it really hard and immobilize it, or it's just gonna, you're just gonna wound it, it's gonna fall off your spear. So you'll see him right here with that broom fish doing exactly that, taking his time, cruising up to it, and getting that stone shot. And then you'll see here in this next clip, this monster Moanakali. And you'll kind of see how many times this thing gets close and gets almost to within range where you think like, oh, I could just shoot that. And if, if maybe he had a slip tip on the end of that spear, or maybe if he, definitely if he was using a spear gun, he would have taken that shot. But he really needs that that fish to be perfect. He needs to wreck that Moana Kali. Otherwise, he's just gonna wound this thing and he's gonna swim away. So right there, he had him. I thought for sure he was gonna pin it against that rock. And that Moana Kali just got a little bit spooked, right? Took off. But you'll see that he waits and that fish comes back. And you'll see this over and over underwater. Like those fish are used to being scared a thousand times a day. Like they're just they're just darting around. Things are cruising around all day long. And as long as you remain in place and you stay super calm, a lot of times they'll come back and give you another pass, another pass. And that's what happened here. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get close enough to get this stone shot that he wanted, and he didn't take a shot. Just shows the incredible restraint needed when hunting bigger fish with that three prong. And this next clip is another Justin dive, and it's a rare look into Justin missing a fish. But that's not why we're watching it. What we're watching it for is to see a unique kind of way that he hunts a moo. And when he's three pronging, I've seen him do this a dozen times. He's three pronging away, and the moo will get super curious and kind of follow him around. And then he'll go over real casually, he'll take the three prong, he'll clip it off to the spear, he'll grab his gun and he'll swim back down. And a lot of times he makes that happen. So he went down to the bottom here to hide, to look around. And you'll see that he lost track of where the moo was. But then he came back up high, looked around, spotted that thing, and then he'll do a beautiful aguado technique. That's when you're actually crawling across the bottom using these boulders as kind of a blind to get close and close the gap on a fish. And you can see him really travel across these things, calm, slowly, until he's within range, but very uncharacteristic of Justin shooting, not able to connect on this one. Dustin has a neighborhood meat grinder. He just had to go pick it up from somebody else that was borrowing it. Like I said, it makes its way around. This is that Axis deer I picked up on Lanai. This stuff just looks freaking fantastic. We really want to make it into burger, make it a little bit more manageable, but we are going to grind up some of that venison real quick. And then what are we doing? We're going hunting. Oh. I gotta cut some more meat. Are we making noodles? Well guys, swapped the dive gear for the hunting gear. Thank you, Sean, new Kuyu day pack. Where's your rangefinder? I don't have a rangefinder. You have a rangefinder for you me? You have a rangefinder pocket. I have a rangefinder pocket. But guys, I don't have a rangefinder. Justin, Wayne, L, anybody got an extra rangefinder for me? This is why I got friends like Justin. 
Now I can tell how far I'm missing these pigs from. This entire situation happens five minutes into hunting, and from where I was standing, I could see several other groups of pigs around. Combine that with the fact that I had zero confidence in my shooting made me want to get as close as possible before taking a shot. When I was well inside of 20 yards and finally feeling confident, the pig walked right at me, getting closer and closer but not presenting a shot. Eventually, he ran into me, took off, and paused at 30, where, like a true kook, I fired anyways. Anticlimactic. He missed. We found Uncle's arrow covered in blood and spent the rest of the evening tracking him, but unfortunately was never able to close the deal. As a totally beginner hunter, I find it surprising how many hunts are completely unsuccessful, and because of that, how important it is to prep and freeze meat for later use. That is completely the opposite mentality I have with the ocean, in that no matter how much or how little we get, it's always eaten or shared fresh. Hunting and fishing have so many differences, but at the end of the day, it's all about the same thing. Collecting some of the best food in the world to share with your friends.